You wanted it. You got it. Mm -hmm. We're diving deep into betrayal today. That awful feeling when someone you trusted, I don't know, just totally lets you down. Oof, yeah. Hits you right in the gut, doesn't it? Absolutely. And we're taking a cue from Real Talk with Lady T on this one. No, oh, she keeps it real, that's for sure. Mr. T, Rific too. They did not hold back. No filter, which is why we love them. Right. But what really struck me was how they framed betrayal. It's not just about the action, you know, the thing that happened. It's about the impact. Like the aftershocks. Yeah. It makes you question everything. Yourself, your judgment, even future relationships. Like, can you trust anyone again? It's that moment when you're like, how did I not see this coming? Exactly. And Lady T had this line that just, I don't know, it stuck with me. She said, friends are supposed to have our backs. Ugh, that's the worst part. When that unspoken agreement, that feeling of safety, it just shatters. It really does. And in that moment when you're reeling, Mr. t Rific, he goes, don't bottle it up. So don't try to be stoic and pretend you're fine. Just lean into the mess. Well, he didn't say mess exactly. But yeah, the idea is you got to feel it to heal it. Okay, so how does that work? Because honestly, when you're hurting, all you want is to make it stop. Right, but pushing those emotions down, it's like temporary fix. They'll resurface. So we're talking about actually acknowledging the hurt, the anger, all of it. Exactly. It's the first step, right? Like you can't deal with something if you're pretending it's not there. So you've acknowledged it. Now what? Lady T mentioned talking it out. It's got the next step. It can be. She suggested therapy, which is great, but also just a trusted friend sometimes. So finding your safe space, whether it's a professional or someone you love, but then what? Let's say you've talked it out, you're processing. Right. How do you actually start moving forward? Mr. t Rific is all about setting boundaries. What does that even look like in this context? That's where it gets really interesting and honestly super practical. Okay, because boundaries can sound kind of, I don't know, aggressive almost. Right, but it's not about punishing the other person. It's about protecting yourself. It's about you taking back control, right? 100%. It's about recognizing, hey, I deserve to feel safe. And sometimes safety means creating some distance. Distance from the person who betrayed you. Okay. So how do we actually do that? What are some practical ways to set those boundaries? Well, it could be as simple as just, you know, limiting contact. So you're not necessarily cutting them off completely. But, but necessarily, no. But you're being more intentional. Maybe you see them less often. Or, or you're careful about the topics you discuss. Exactly. Like, you might say, I'm not comfortable talking about that. Lady T had this great example, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, about a friend who shared a secret, something really personal. And Lady T was like, look, I can't trust you with that kind of information anymore. Oof, that's got to be tough. Right, for sure. But she was firm, you know? Like, we can still hang out, but just so you know, things have changed. She set that boundary. I love that. But what about situations where you can't just, I don't know, reduce contact like what if it's a family member or someone you work with that is tricky and lady t and mr t rific they actually talked about that they called it managing the relationship so not pretending it didn't happen no not